Thank you so much. I know we are between you and a fashion show and dinner, uh, but you know I have this opportunity of talking to you know the senior team from one of the most iconic companies in the country, iconic for what it has done for the consumer, the trust and the respect that it commands, the team that it has created, the culture that pervades the organization, and being a finance guy, I can't but not talk about numbers, the value it has created. As I was looking at the numbers over the last 10 years, Titan has grown its revenues by four times. You would say, well, that's all right, but this is from a 10,000 crore to a almost 40,000 crore company. And each year, except COVID, it's grown, and profits have similarly grown by four and a half times. And what this has done is that the markets have rewarded it by taking the market cap up from about 20,000 crore to two lakh crores. This is one of the most valuable companies, and this is the team that represents each of the businesses that has made it happen. What I'm going to do to start off with is to request all of you to probably, you know, speak a minute about some aspect of the business that you run, which is different or any anecdote that you remember, something that can help our audience get some insights into Titan. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, I head the Watches and Wearables division. And I think uh, the story is that while continuing to maintain a very high market share and leadership position in the analog fashion market, we have also made a lot of strides in the emerging wearable smartwatches market in the last two years. And uh, the consumer has uh, adopted both. Uh, both watches and smartwatches are growing, albeit at different rates and on different bases. Uh, and I think the uniqueness of the product and the benefit to the consumer one remains a timeless accessory, a style statement, and often a status symbol. And the other is a very uh, useful and productive device trapped to your body that gives you a lot of information about your health, your fitness, uh, notifications about your work or uh, other social media. So, I think the really interesting part of the watches and wearables business is how do we grow the, it's really a startup within a, a company, as well as at the same time work on maintaining and enhancing a leadership position in an established category. Great. Uh, thank you, Suparna, and good evening, everyone. It's a delight. I'm really delighted to be here. I'm going to talk about Tanaira. Tanaira is the youngest division from Titan Company, and uh, it is in the women's ethnic wear space. Uh, we have uh, 38 stores across the country, and uh, we offer design differentiated saris and ready-to-wear kurtas uh, from, made from pure and natural fibers and uh, 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 collected from across uh, 100 weaving clusters of the country. Uh, we celebrate and we aim to preserve the diverse textile crafts that we have in our beautiful country. And uh, we celebrate the craftsmanship of our, and the creative genius of our weavers. Uh, we bring, we try to bring uh, the best of uh, India in, in under one roof in our stores. Uh, so one trivia that would like to uh, talk about, uh, it's not very widely known, is uh, the work that we do with weavers. Though we celebrate the weavers, but we know that you know, their working conditions uh, and uh, they are facing many challenges. Uh, to name a few, uh, like how power loom is taking over hand loom, how uh, uh, synthetic fibers are taking over pure and natural fibers, and how the second generation of weavers is not uh, willing to continue to weave and how, uh, you know, even the current weavers are leaving their jobs and taking on uh, odd jobs. Uh, to take care of and to tackle these uh, challenges that they're facing, we've launched a program called Weaver Shala. 
And the aim of Viva Shala is to upgrade the infrastructure to, of uh, the weavers, the way they weave, and also upgrade and uplift their uh, design capabilities and the technical exp expertise. Uh, we have four such weaver shalas already in the country, and we aim to get to about 50 in the next four to five years. Uh, so that's one trivia thought I'll talk about. Wow, Thank you. That's having your heart in the right place. Hi, uh, this is Manish. Uh, very excited to be here. So, uh, you know, uh, I'm managing the fragrances and fashion accessories part of the business. I think it's a very exciting category, uh, maybe the most exciting category. So there are two businesses there. One is the fine fragrance and other is the bags business. So in the fragrances business, of course, the wicked challenge is that the consumer penetration is low, but uh, Skin Brand has done exceptionally well, which is basically for, it's crafted in France, uh, as good as any international brand at a very affordable price. That's the basic customer value proposition. And uh, many of you would already know that it's the number one brand for the last five uh, years in uh, department chains. So it's a very well distributed, uh, uh, something like 2,000 plus doors in general trade, uh, e-commerce, and across the channel. So it's, a, it's a fantastic to be there. and. Uh, and uh, some interesting uh, things are going to happen in the future and how, how we target the mass fragrance part. The second part of the business is the bags business where, uh, you know, we just launched a new brand. We were always there for about eight to 10 years uh, with the fast track girls bag. And uh, we just launched uh, Earth brand about a few months ago in October. And uh, so that's, I think we have a stall outside. Many of you would have seen it. Uh, so it's, a, it's, it's basically uh, a brand which is, uh, the proposition is thoughtfully designed bags for women who are leading active lifestyle to make a difference to their life and their journeys. So that's the key proposition and white space that we're operating in. And uh, we're very excited about it. And I think we'll discuss more as we go. Thank you. Thanks, Manish. I'm going to ask Arun to go next and I'll bring up the rear end. Uh, evening, everyone. I know it's been a long day, but thank you for being here. And uh, thanks, uh, Images and Shailesh, for having us here. Uh, I represent a brand that uh, just turned 25, uh, just over a year back. It's, uh, it's a brand that uh, today is present in about 250 cities in the country. We just crossed uh, 400 stores a couple of months back. Uh, and it's a brand that began in tough times, uh, pretty much, you could say, uh, a rags to riches kind of story. We've seen tough days in our initial times, uh, and perhaps in the last couple of decades, the brand has come uh, on, uh, to its own from about 2005 onwards. Uh, Tanishk is a special brand, a brand that uh, has been built with a lot of love and care by, uh, I've been in, you know, involved in the brand last three years, but um, it's a brand that's built, it's been built with a lot of love and care by many teams uh, over the last two decades and uh, owes its success to uh, two people, women in India, who've uh, uh, given us the confidence to do many things and who've been strongly behind the brand and people in our stores who've really been our ambassadors for brand Tanishk. Um, so a couple of years back, we had a tough decision to take uh, just before COVID uh, uh, hit us, which is to let go of uh, a national face and uh, go in without a model, which is kind of went against the grain of thought. Uh, but we did that only with the confidence that uh, we have 8,000 ambassadors for the brand in uh, all our stores, and many million women who strong, uh, stand strongly behind the brand. So that's really uh, the story of Tanishk, and we owe it to many women across the country and many of you lovely women in the room. So thank you for being in our corner. So guys who are running brands and finding that things are tough, keep hope. Tanishk also felt the initial years were tough. Many years were tough. 
Okay, the reason I wanted to come last was I represent the newest kid on the block, Titan's international business. And um, the good thing is, uh, therefore, uh, I look at all the other five businesses that we have, watches, jewelry, eye care, fragrances, and Tanera. Uh, it's really been an exciting story the last uh, few years. We started doing uh, international business pretty much as soon as we opened the company. 25 plus years ago, we took watches around the world. We were present in more than 30 countries today. And uh, that's really uh, helped build our presence across the world. But we felt that the opportunity is much larger. Uh, today, diaspora Indians are amongst the most successful set of uh, diaspora people around the world, numbering around 32 million. I mean, just the 7 million that you find in North America between Canada and the US are probably the wealthiest set of Indians anywhere in the world. And, uh, you know, like Arun mentioned, a brand like Tanishk was waiting to be taken to them. Uh, three things Indians do when they come back to India. One, they get their teeth fixed. <laughs> Second, they buy eyewear. And third, they go to Tanishk. Fortunately, we are present in two of those categories. And therefore, you know, it made a lot of sense for us to take Tanishk across. And wherever we've opened Tanishks, uh, it's been met with a tremendous response. People are flocking to the stores. It's pretty much like IKEA coming to India. It's the reverse of that, right? Tanishk going to New Jersey or Tanishk going to Dubai is like IKEA coming to Bangalore. Many of us are familiar with the brand. We shop it when we travel outside. The reverse is what the diaspora Indians are doing. So that's really the story that we are looking at. The opportunity is huge, and uh, there are other great Indian examples. If you look at the two-wheeler industry today, uh, Bajaj, Hero, TVS, all of them have substantial businesses outside of India. More than 50% of Bajaj's turnover comes from outside of India, and about 55% of their profits come from outside of India. So in two-wheelers below 600 cc's, Indian brands are really ruling the roost. And there's no reason why in the lifestyle business we can't do that. So the opportunity we feel is huge, it's tremendous. Also, when we work internationally across different markets, uh, we learn a lot. You know, the customers are sometimes a little bit more evolved than what we see. Uh, we bring in a lot of those practices, for example, retail practices, and you only have to go as far as Dubai to see that today. I mean, Dubai, I think, has caught up with uh, New York, uh, London, uh, San Francisco, uh, Paris. It's today up there, both in terms of retail, in terms of, uh, let's say, entertainment opportunities, and even in terms of art. I mean, there's enough to do in that city. So some of these are what we believe will help us mature as a company. One is the opportunity. The second is that it teaches us a lot of things that we think will make us stronger brands and a better company. Thank it's you. So, it's so amazing that this is a company which is so large, but seeking out opportunity anywhere, everywhere and anywhere. And if I just think back and look at it, jewelry, unorganized, difficult to get into segment, and they made a success out of it. Eyewear, again, completely unorganized, fragmented, and they made a success out of it. And now, sarees. Guys, if you have a difficult category, I think they'll get into it. So here... Uh, Maybe the teeth opportunity is something I, I, I thought look. that was a hint that, Dini, you were giving that that's the next category you're getting into. If we can fix eyes, then surely teeth are not that far behind. Years also, yeah. So here's a question for you, uh, uh, Ambuj. You know, you, you have the youngest business in the group. Yeah. Are you treated like an orphan? Ye chota sa 50, 60, 100 ka dhanda, 10,000 crore ke company mein? 40,000 crore ki company mein? Certainly not. Uh, and uh, I would just like to clarify, if I sounded very serious uh, early on, we are not a serious brand. We are a very young and fun brand. And uh, probably when we do the ramp walk, we will see the kind of saris that we bring out. And they are actually meant to appeal to the young and a lot of young women in the crowd. So uh, right there at the right time. And uh, no, I don't. 
because uh, though we are a new business and uh, I don't really have, uh, I don't have dreams, uh, I don't get these dreams about jis din paisa hoga, wo din kaisa hoga, like a lot of maybe my friends here would be wondering, uh, because if I need funding, I just have to look to my left and look to my extreme right, <laughs> and they provide all the funding to me. And uh, so thank you, Suparna. Thank you, Arun. Uh, wonderful uh, stories we've had of 25 years and maybe 30, 30, 35 years. Uh, so I'm treated like a new kid on the block, and I have a lot of liberties, is all I can say. So those of you who have teenage children at home still, I've been, we've been trying unsuccessfully to get our son to leave home. So Amboj, Manish, and me are like that. You know, these guys are like the parents who we, you know, lean on when we need uh, a larger allowance or a little bit more money to spend on ANP and other things. So, uh, so Arun, how do you feel about that? All this responsibility of bringing in the money and these kids spend it all. See, you, you've got one parent that saw success from day one. And you have the other parent as an example who's seen really bad days, struggled, and kind of made it a success. So you've got two, you know, kind of role models. So, so watches so think, seems to be yeah, watches saw success thing. from day if one. This family drama has to be taken to its logical conclusion. Eventually, the parents will go to old age home, and the new kids in the block will be having a big party. Ma Manish, I would like you to step in. How do you feel as the new kid on the block? No, I think it's uh, it's very exciting. Just to be on a serious note, uh, you know when we C had serious allowed nahi hai idhar. Serious allowed nahi hai. <laughs> yeah. So I think my boss claims that uh, he is spending 20% on my business. So you can imagine my plight. So uh, so that is the kind of focus which uh, Venkat brings uh, uh, to the new businesses. In fact, including Tanara and IBD and. Uh, us and uh, there's a lot of fun and there's a lot of freedom as Ambuj said and uh, certainly we are not, we are freed from the profitability pressure so much and basically going for scale. That is what we are operating on right now. I think this is an amazing story where you have businesses which are generating cash continuing to grow and then at the same time there are several seeds sowed which can blossom into you know flowers and large trees over time and there is complete you know, kind of protection from the top to say that these are experiments which must succeed. But I'm going to ask you and any one of you can answer. I'm sure you would have had some failures. If you'd like to talk about stuff that went wrong, you had to shut down. I think I'll talk a little about Gold Plus. Yeah. It's an interesting story. I don't know, how many of you have ever heard of Gold Plus? Mm, two people in the room. I think both from South India. So Gold Plus was a retail chain uh, for, um, for jewelry, uh, primarily gold, uh, not so much studded, which was uh, there from around 2004, five till about 2012 or 13. Um, I was at that time from 2000, 12 to 15, the regional business head for South. So I was the only regional business head who had that additional chain called Gold Plus. And uh, it was uh, not easy. It was uh, hard to establish the brand, the competition uh, in South, which was very, very strong in gold jewelry. And uh, eventually, much later, uh, we took the decision of folding Gold Plus into the larger Tanishq um, brand. And uh, I think the purpose of Gold Plus, in a way, it, that brand served its purpose because it made those markets. And I'm talking about tier two, three towns in, um, in uh, Tamil Nadu, AP Telangana, Karnataka, and a little so, bit of Maharashtra. So what I'm hearing Suparna say is that make mistakes even if you have failures, after 10 years, nobody will remember. Yeah, nobody remembers. Like, I, I, it was alive to me because I was part of the decision. And of course, we took care of all the employees and many of the franchisees became Tanish franchisees. Uh, it was um, an emotional decision, but essentially quite painless. So I'm going to ask one question and then maybe if somebody has questions from the audience, which is, you know, yours is a fantastic team you've created significant value. 
if any of you would like to talk about the culture, what is it that, ma that has made this organization what it is, and the people what they are? The parents or the kids, whoever wants to talk. So, uh, let me talk about that. The grandfather. From the perspective of an outsider, I'm a relative newbie to Titan. I've been with the Tata group my entire career, but joined Titan in 2015. And one of the things that uh, my previous role in the Tata group was uh, a role with the Tata Business Excellence Program, part of Tata Sons, which in a way afforded me a fly on the wall perspective of a bunch of Tata companies. And the one thing that you noticed right there on was that the culture in Titan was significantly different from many other companies and even from other Tata companies. Uh, there was a lot of outspokenness, there was a lot of freedom, there was a lot of ability to express what you wanted to say without any fear, there was a willingness to experiment. And I would say that one of the reasons why in 2015 when my wife and I were looking to move to Bangalore, I chose to approach Bhaskar and Titan was the fact that I really think it has amongst the best cultures in corporate India. And the interesting thing there is it's got to do a lot with the leaders and their personality styles. I think uh, Xerxes first, Bhaskar next, and now Venkat, who is our current MD. Uh, that aspect of uh, titaniusism, sorry, I didn't get that right. Titaness is something that permeates the whole system and it is not individual dependent. You know, we often say that it's something that's, uh, now nobody can change even if they wanted to. It's uh, become endemic. So I think to me, that's the perspective. I don't know what you guys have to say, you might. No, I, I'll just add one more point to that. Apart from the restlessness that's there, just to connect to the earlier uh, point I made on uh, the two key people that are important in our lives, um, and it goes back to the care the organization uh, prioritizes for people. And I'll just take you back to COVID. And uh, in the initial days, there was so much of uncertainty and anxiety uh, that the organization decided two things. We are largely a franchised network. We have very few company-owned stores. So a lot of our business comes from partners. But one thing we laid out on day one to all our partners is irrespective of what happens, irrespective of when stores will open and irrespective of when lockdown gets over, you are going to pay salaries to each and every employee as if nothing has changed. And whatever we need to do, we will do to support you. The second thing uh, which, and I think this pretty much came from our teams, is that I think about maybe one and a half million customers were contacted across all our businesses only to ask them, how are you doing and do you need help? Because we have stores in more than you know, 300 towns across the country. All of them are managed by partners. And each partner has the wherewithal to step in and help customers wherever they are. And we made one and a half million what we had called as empathy calls. And this came spontaneously from our teams. It was not top down, not dictated. It is just the teams on the ground who said, we just have to call customers and not talk about dhanda but just say, how are you doing? Do you need help? And some amazing stuff happened from the teams. There are you know, stores which made lists of doctors who are customers saying, Kuch hai toh, this is a list of doctors we can call if some customers need help. And there are others who organized various things from city to city just to kind of pitch in. So there's just something which is uh, decentralized and you know, which uh, we just blessed, I think, with people down the line who uh, just think and uh, do things in the interests of customers. And uh, I don't know whether it's culture or what it is, we're just blessed. I'll just yeah, leave it at that. I totally agree. I think there are two quotes uh, which I want to make, which are often talked about in Titan. One was a phrase that um, Bhaskar Bhatt, our earlier MD, uh, used a lot, and it's kind of in, got ingrained in a lot of us, which is uh, unconditional positive regard for the individual. Unconditional. Not because you're a good performer or whatever. Uncondi every single employee is respected, and there is 
uh, un positive regard for people. Uh, and the second statement is something that Venkat, our current MD boss, uh, talks a lot. And it is actually, uh, it was a little bit in display in the earlier little banter, that we take our work very seriously, but we don't take ourselves very seriously. And that's very important, I think, uh, to be just grounded and simple and have fun at work. Uh, we, I, I mean, all of those metrics, you know, you say two lakh crores, it is a meaningless metric for us because we are not thinking about it. We are just doing our work with all our teams and we are having fun and hopefully doing some good work. I think that's really where uh, I, the, the impulse of the organization is. I don't think any of us are watching stock price. We are watching customer metrics. And that's really quite deeply ingrained. I know I was, we were discussing that Titan has received yet another award, the best company of the year award today. And people will say, yeah, it's okay, we keep getting these awards every year. <laughs> so uh, I think we got a little bit serious, uh, just to add some fun elements to uh, uh, the company culture. So uh, not only my division is a new kid on the block, even I'm a new kid on the block, just completed fir my first year in Titan this month. And in Titan, we don't talk in years, we talk in decades. So like Suparna would have completed three decades, so you know, likewise. So Arun would have completed three decades. So we talk in decades. Uh, and uh, one great thing that I found out of coming here is that there's a lot of singing, you know. And Venkat leads the pack. He is a, he is a singer, and no party ever ends without singing. The entire leadership sings. The yeah, the parties end at 3 a.m. That's another thing. So that's the key yeah. message for me. Please sing in your office parties and don't end them before 3 a.m. The other fun fact is there is no dress code. Okay, we t as Suparna said, we take ourselves very, you know, uh, the business very seriously, but we take ourselves very casually. So there is no dress code. Uh, uh, and the first board meeting I was supposed to attend and I asked, uh, so what's the dress code? We, we all have to come like, you know, in blazers or suits. And I had invested in a suit. And we were told, what, there's no dress code. You come as you are, come as you uh, like. Uh, that was something very, uh, you know, astounding to uh, find that, you know, in the board meeting there is no dress code. So overall, a great fun company to work with is uh, my, you know, uh, what I feel after my first year at Titan. Just to add, uh, you know, I've, I'm finishing seven years now and having worked with companies like Aisha, Asian Paints and Dell. So two things which are uh, very remarkable and which probably, uh, you know, expresses the way it is. One is that, uh, you know, Bhaskar often say, often used to say, you know, we don't monitor performance, we inspire performance. That is one thing. So therefore, you know, he was my boss. I was asking, why don't you ask me numbers? And so he will never do that and said, we inspire performance. That is one thing which is very clearly indicative. And second thing was uh, Venkat told once that, you know, this is a place where ordinary people come and do extraordinary things. So these two statements, I think, left a very indelible impression, uh, at least on me. And, uh, and even the vision statement is like creating elevating experiences for the people we touch. You know, all these things are very people-focused organization and it's something which strikes you when you join the company. Uh, uh, you don't feel intimidated, you feel very welcomed, people share information. And that's the first feeling that, I mean, I've checked with so many people and most people talk about that. Th this it's a very is warm so culture, very people-oriented culture. This is this so is amazing. This is the point at which we say all CVs are welcome. You know who to, <laughs> there's so much of selling of the company as a place so to work. This, this has been an amazing talk. I think. Uh, you know, a very successful company, but I got a chance to spend time with all of the gentlemen and the lady here. Completely down to earth, amazing work culture and the way they've created value is amazing. I think we should now probably let the fashion show uh, start and thank you so much. Uh, thank you.